Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to do the final installment for homeostasis finishing with thermoregulation. Now if you are new here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on so that you can get the freshest content from me every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in matric and you're thinking about doing a little better in your exams or tests or maybe you need a little extra help on things, you should think about joining my membership. Included in the membership are exam walkthrough videos where I walk you through how to answer exam questions as well as live lessons with me and so much more. So let's get into some of the basics that we need to know. Now, as the name suggests, thermo refers to temperature and regulation means to regulate your temperature. Now, the skin is the main organ of the body that is responsible for regulating the temperature. And it does this in a number of ways. And we're going to break those down and how they interact also with the water of your body and how water can play a role in keeping you hot or cold, depending on what you need to respond to. Now, at this point, we should have some knowledge of the structure of the skin. Going through the layers very quickly, we have the outermost layer of the skin, which we should know is the epidermis. And this is the outermost layer. It prevents drying out, um, essentially um, like blood loss as well, so that you don't lose any blood or anything like that. And it's the outermost layer it is also the layer that is dead on the very, very, very outside of you. Then sitting below that, we have the dermis. The dermis is the living part of your skin. And what I mean by that is it's not as thin and flaky and dead as the epidermis is. Um, the dermis is where we find a lot of different structures, as you can see in the picture. There's many things there that we're going to discuss now what they are. And then just below that, we have the final layer at the bottom here, which in some textbooks, they will just refer to it as a fat layer. But in other textbooks, they call it the subcutaneous fat layer. And the subcutaneous fat layer is essentially the fat that's just under the surface of your skin. And it's there for warmth um, and to keep the heat in. Now, in terms of all the other structures in this image, there's actually only a few of them that we're going to focus in on this particular lesson. And they are going to be the sweat gland, which is this structure over here. There's the sweat pore. Here is the actual sweat gland at the bottom. That's going to be used to regulate your body temperature by sweating more or less. And then we're going to speak about the blood vessels of the skin, which are these over here. We call them dermal arterioles. Now, you'll notice that they change in thickness. They're quite thick at the bottom, but they're quite thin at the top here. And the reason for that is it depends on the amount of blood that is flowing through that area. And we're going to go through how do you actually explain thermoregulation in the skin. So let's now break down how does it work? How does the skin maintain your internal body temperature? So first of all, we're going to start on a cold day. And I just want you to take note of the two sets of arteries in this picture. We have this uh, lower set over here that's a bit thicker and wider. It's deeper in the skin. You'll notice it's right up against the fat that's just below it. And then we have these thinner arterioles near the surface. And you'll notice that their thickness is slightly different. And that has to do with the process of vasoconstriction, which is the body's way of constricting the blood flow to the surface of the skin and therefore preserving more heat energy. Now, if you were going to explain this in an exam or a test, you would start always by the sense receiving a stimulus. So... In this instance, what we start off with is the receptors in the skin are going to detect cold. And there are receptors in the skin that are specifically just for cold and then just for hot. Now, that information needs to be sent to someone. Someone has to make a decision. And so that is then sent off to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, if you've forgotten, is a region in the brain. And it is responsible for maintaining some very basic bodily functions, Things like ADH, so it's responsible for water and maintaining that as well. And it makes sense because the hypothalamus controls water, it controls heat, and those two go hand in hand because they are your body's uh, cooling mechanism. So it makes sense that you should be able to control both from there.
Now that this has been sent to our um, control center, we now need to send off a message to the effector, someone who needs to do something about it. So we send a message off, and that message is going to go off to what we call the dermal arterioles. And I mentioned them earlier. Those are the small blood vessels that we find just below the surface of your skin. Now, <clears throat> In these dermal arterioles, they come in two kinds, and therefore there are going to be two responses. The first response I'm going to talk about is something called a shunt vessel. A shunt vessel is a deeper blood vessel, and those blood vessels are the ones that I uh, pointed out earlier in the diagram on the left here. It is these bigger ones at the bottom. That is the shunt vessel. Now, those shunt vessels relax. That's the message they are told. And when they relax, they then divert more blood into the subcutaneous layer. In other words, more blood is pushed down into the fatty layer. And as we know, fat is an insulator, so we keep the heat in there. On the other side, though, you'll notice there's a second arrow, and that is because our... Um, other set of dermal arterioles, uh, they have muscles in them. And we need to constrict those muscles to stop the blood from flowing to the surface. So they're actually just simply called circular muscles. And those circular muscles, if we have a look on the diagram again one more time on the, on the left here, are located, I've just circled one, are located right where the um, shunt vessels and the rest of the dermal arterioles like connect with one another. And basically what we do is we contract that little muscle and it closes off any blood that is flowing to the surface of the skin. So that then limits how much blood is going to the surface. And if less blood is flowing to the surface, then we are losing less heat. And that's also why you'll notice when you're cold, your skin can change color and you can look more bluishy um, or pale. And that is because uh, less oxygenated blood is getting to the surface of your skin because we're trying to keep you warm. Now, if you take these two actions together, they are finally going to produce an outcome. And that outcome, and that's always why we end our answers with the product at the end, is that less heat is lost through radiation, convection, and conduction. And remember, these are the ways that the body loses heat, either through the heat just radiating out of you, either into your clothing or into the air just around your body. And because you are losing less heat, very, very importantly here, everybody, you are sweating less. And often in exams, uh, examiners like to overlap this question with an ADH question where they ask you about if you have been uh, not sweating very much, like it's a cold day. Describe how the body regulates the temperature and describe how the body regulates the water in the body. And this is a great overlap um, that we can see in exams or tests. Now we're going to do the complement to a cold day, which is, of course, a hot day. I just want you to know, quickly notice the slight differences in the diagram alongside. You will notice the surface arterioles, these ones over here, are much bigger. Um, you'll notice that the circular muscle over here has relaxed, and so more blood can flow to the surface, and therefore we've got more heat loss going on. And then also you'll see the shunt vessel lower down near the fat. That's much, much smaller. And it's because we're restricting the blood flow. So the explanation for this is pretty much the same. Uh, there are a few, like, few key words that you need to uh, be aware of when you do this explanation. But I always tell my learners, if you learn the one, then the other is just the opposite. Now, what do we call this process? Well, if the previous one is vasoconstriction, this one is vasodilation. And it, as it suggests in the name, is vaso, it is your blood vessels dilating. So again, one more time, we always start our explanation off with the receptors. This time, the receptors are picking up the heat in our skin that message is then sent off to the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is going to send a corrective measure, which is basically a way which we're going to fix the problem, to the dermal arterioles. Now we come into the slight difference. We still have two outcomes. As I said, now we have two different kinds of blood vessels, so we need two different outcomes. First things first, the shunt vessels, those are the ones that are deeper down in the fat layer. They are going to contract. 
Now, because they are contracting, the product of that is going to be less blood is going to be diverted into the subcutaneous layer. So there's now less blood and less heat going into your fat layer. Now, on the other side, with the other arterioles, the ones that are closer to the surface, we need to look at the fact that the circular muscles at the base, as I have just ringed them earlier on the picture, they relax. And when they relax, we end up having more blood flow to the surface of our skin. And that's why when we're hot, we look flushed, we look pink and red. And it's because the blood is trying to go to the surface to release heat but also to evaporate sweat, which brings me to my final point. When we join these two together, they produce the following outcome. You are going to lose more heat through radiation, convection, and conduction. And on top of that, you are going to sweat more. And that's a good thing because when you sweat and you lose water, when the water evaporates off the surface of your skin, it takes the heat with it. And that's ultimately what is cooling you down when you are sweating. And again, it's a lovely example of how examiners can sort of overlap that also, as I mentioned before, with ADH. They are also have been known to overlap this question with aldosterone and regulating your salt. Because, of course, if you're sweating, you're losing water and you're losing salt at the same time. Now, I just wanted to include this picture because it's just a nice side by side and it's a nice like visual summary of the two. And I just wanted to show you so you can see the visual comparison between a cold day versus a hot day and what it looks like in the dermal arterioles. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a terminology recap. You can use all of these words for flashcards, for quick revision. It's a really easy and simple way to make sure you're going to get full marks. So first of all, we took a look at the two ways the body regulates its internal temperature through vasoconstriction, which is constricting the blood vessels in the skin and putting more heat into the fat layer, keeping you warm on a cold day. But then on a hot day, we go through vasodilation, which is the body's way of dilating the skin arteries and allowing more heat to escape and also allowing more sweat to evaporate. Now, in order to do this, we need to use the dermal arterioles, which are the teeny tiny little arteries in your skin. And they are the ones that are responsible for uh, making the changes to their thickness, either getting thinner or thicker, dilating or constricting. Now, who's in charge of this? The hypothalamus. This is the region of the brain that is responsible for regulating this whole process. And it sends uh, information to the ar ar dermal arterioles. And it's either going to tell the circular muscles to contract or relax, or it's going to take the shunt vessels to contract or relax, depending on whether you want the blood to go to the surface or you want it to go towards the fat. And speaking of fat, the fat layer is also known as the subcutaneous fat layer. It is the fat layer that sits just under the surface of the skin in your dermis. And um, this is like the fat that you would associate just under the surface if you were to maybe um, graze your hand and you'd be able to see a bit of the yellowy fat layer just below it. This is also the fat that we would use to regulate our body temperature. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. I post every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure notifications are turned on so you get notified the moment I post a new video. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.